All right, I'm gonna work my way from the bottom. Start, you know, go to the top. So there's a lot that we have to go over this week in indoor football. First things first, Danny Southwick is back on the Columbus lines like he was in the FCF not even like a few weeks ago. This man, the, this is the eternal journeyman. Like, where is his 30 for 30 at ESPN? Where is his 30 for 30? He's back on the Columbus Lions. Speaking of Columbus, they got beat up, whipped, destroyed pretty much by Jacksonville. You know, you know, Malik Henry was uh he was actually playing a lot better. You know, no Mike Faithful, um, Warren Smith. I believe that that Faithful Warren Smith trade finally happened, if I'm not mistaken, and everything like that. Because I mean, there, it it was a trade like three weeks ago, and then you know they rescinded it, and then it went back into place apparently. So uh, there was that, but I haven't been keeping up with that. I leave that to the guys over inside the walls. Please go follow them, as I've said before. Uh, Daquan Neal, congrats, my guy. The IFL MVP in, what, 2019? Yeah. Get the tryout for the Indianapolis Skulls. I hope you get it. I, I honestly hope this man even, you know, not not only does he get on the codes, he, he, he uh, becomes their quarterback. Uh, I honestly hope that because, I mean, Daquan Neal is a, is a baller. Like, dude is a baller. Like, dude can play. So, we know that. Um, the FCF right now, you know, the weird thing is the whole crypto thing because crypto kind of crashed on Thursday and Friday, so I don't know how that's going to, you know, impact the FCF at all. If it has, it, that's a good thing. If it hasn't, that's also a good thing, I guess. You know, because you know you want you want you want the game to succeed. You know, you just don't want it like this. You know, you don't want it like the FCF and how they do it. Because, uh, again, it's just a bit too gimmicky for me personally and everything like that. Uh, but Terrell Owens, their first ever trade, the FCF had their first ever trade. He got traded to KOD. I believe the Zappers and the Beast were also involved. And speaking of the Beast, why is Marcus Peters owning, you know, a stake in the Beast? And why? And how? How did I not know that he was uh, Marshawn Lynch's cousin? How did I not know that? I don't think a lot of people knew that. Like, what? What do you mean? Pure insanity. Also, Martavis Bryant and Kelly Bryant are playing in this league. They, they've been playing in the league for a couple weeks now, but I just wanted to, you know, finally get that out because I feel like, you know, it, it adds to the nonsensical, complex situation that the FCL puts themselves in. And prides themselves in because all you see is articles about Tara Owens. You don't see anything about the FCF itself. You see articles about Tara Owens being in the FCF. That's not a good sign. That's really that really isn't a good sign. You know, you know, it, it, it is what it is though. It is what it is. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna complain about it because the FCF their season is coming down to a close itself. In fact, I believe it'll be next week or the week after. No way! In, like in no way! It'll be like the second week of the June, I believe. They finish up, so you know you're gonna have to talk about the FCF after June 11th, I think. Um, the National Football Association or the or the NIF or whatever. Check out how power they played the Missouri Monarchs, the semi-pro team, and remember they'll be taking on Central Illinois for the NFA title in Danville, Illinois on May 21st, not Chicago, but, you know, Danville, a suburb of Chicago, on May 21st, so, it is what it is, um, honestly, you know, these two teams that are left in this league, honestly, this league needs to fold as well, you know, it, there's just, it's just, it just hasn't been a good look this season for them, they've lost pretty much everybody to either everybody folding or leaving. The AIFA, though, you know, there's been something big that has been brewing over the past few days, and we'll see how this continues to play out, because, you know, not only did the Storm uniforms get stolen by the Tampa Bay Cyclones for some reason, well, they technically weren't stolen, but you know what I mean, like, why are the, why are the Cyclones, why, why did the Cyclones wear the Tampa Bay Storm uniforms, why, even had the little AFL insignia on the pants and everything. But there's also the Mississippi Raiders who are not supposed to be playing on the LA Kiss field because they defaulted on it. They did not pay 
the funds they were supposed to pay to Greg Fenario. And they play they played on this field anyway, you know, because you know they they played on this field anyway today against the Las Vegas Kings. I'm not sure how mad Fornario is gonna be about it, but I'm hoping that Greg gets his field back. You know, he's already sold you know the end zones to Columbus, so I'm hoping somebody can actually utilize this field because the LA Kiss field is a great field. Somebody just needs to get the LA Kiss logo off of there, you know, real quick. But I think, you know, in any case, I think, hey, somebody can use this field. It's a good field in good condition. So, you know, why why isn't it being used by anybody? Because I mean, you, you know, you don't you don't have quality fields, you know, roaming around every day. Just ask the EIF real quick, because. George Alina's field is absolutely terrible. Palmito's field is pretty bad too. But George Alina's was so bad that the EI said, We're not playing you guys anymore in the AF in the FAL. We're playing games against higher level teams or other teams in our league. And speaking of, you know, Kentuckiana, you know, playing higher teams, they played West Michigan. That did not go well. Alabama played Charlotte, and it was so hilarious that oh, that you know the whole thing with Charlotte playing Alabama was just absolute hilarity from beginning to end that there were so many funny moments on Twitter about it. So many. You know, Kentucky on is going to play Magnolia State on either May 26th or the 27th. Not sure which day that'll be. Um, it, it, the AFA website says the 26th. Magnolia says the 27th. I'm assuming it'll be the 27th because who wants to host the game on a Thursday in May? That's stupid. Um, and then you know the other scheduling real the other real scheduling news here is the Cali Gold. They're playing the Oregon High Desert Storm on May 28th instead of North Texas Bulls, who reminder lost to the Dallas Prime. Speaking of a team that lost to the Dallas Prime, let's flip on over to the CIF, which is really the biggest you know the biggest stories have come from the CIF the past few weeks and that did not change this week that did not change because Southwest Kansas they fired their head coach Mark Timberlake named Brandon Burnett or rather Brandon Benson the new head coach for the storm Wyoming released everybody but five guys there's just five guys on their roster now and you know like I have never seen such a disaster from the CIA like you know Wichita took a while to become a complete disaster you know it took 2019 you know the pandemic started in 2020 you know 2021 you know it was bad because of the inflatable walls 2022 they're now playing in a lower level league and you know still looking you know just still having absolutely terrifying results you know but Wyoming this is bad like this is like this is not even New York streets level bad. Like this is just pure comedy all around. You know, a clown show is being run in Wyoming. A clown show is being run. You know, Billings, their head coach Mark Schmidt, he's ill, so you know, Theo Johnson has to replace him for the time being. And you know, despite all that nonsense, despite all that, Billings has a playoff spot because they whip up on Rapid City. Omaha has a playoff spot at Southwest Kansas. Who reminder? Prior to head coach, who was five and two at the time, and they got beat by Sioux City on Saturday, pretty badly. You know, prior to head coach that was five and two at the time. They have a playoff spot. It's not that hard in CIF to get a playoff spot because top six teams, you know, in the league are going to get a playoff spot. Really, right now, the only thing I can see, you know, kind of, you know, shaking out the way it needs to be shaking out is seeding for teams two through five, which is, you know, Omaha, Southwest Kansas, Billings, and Salina. I'm not sure if anybody can catch Sioux City after the way they beat up on Southwest Kansas. It's going to be those four teams fighting it out to see who's going to get that bye, that other bye, you know, and who's going to be playing against whoever the sixth team will be, which might be Wyoming. I don't think it'll be Rapid City. Rapid City has been so bad, it's been comical. And Topeka's also been pretty bad that it's been comical. Like, like it, it's been a shit show this year for the CIF. It's, you know, just when I think this league won the offseason, they turn around and pull some of the dumbest stuff in season that I've ever seen in my entire life. 
and not e not even not even just you know the Nazis off the field on the field it's been pretty bad too I don't think you're supposed to have a game in Omaha Salina where you only where you score less than 30 points combined I don't think you're supposed to have that that's exactly what happened though I think it's like I think it, there I think there's like two or three games that are lower scoring than what Omaha and Salina did Saturday night because it was bad it was really bad like brr you, you gotta be kidding me when you look at the score but it is what it is it's okay it's okay this guy has, has three weeks left in their regular season you know next week the week after that and then June 4th wraps it all up and then the playoffs start I, it'll probably be like the weekend of June 11th of course June 18th will be the uh I, I'm just assuming because you know who who knows because CI hasn't actually released any playoff schedules or anything like that at this time. But I'm assuming you know it'll be you know the month the rest of the month of June trying to get these playoffs done for the CIF and I'll be following the playoffs each and every step of the way. You can also follow a different guy by the name of Arena Football Statement. He's been covering the CIF pretty well. He's been talking to some coaches, talking to some players. My guy. My guy Dukon. You know. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping he can find some answers to some of this stuff in the CIF, because I mean what what has been uncovered the past few weeks has just been absolutely despicable. And it needs to stop. But in any case, you know, CIF's doing fine. The IFL, the way things are shaking out, you know, uh, I don't know if Massachusetts is going to make it back to the IFL this year. It it honestly might be Frisco. It honestly might be, you know, because, I mean, the rest of the Eastern Conference, I hate calling it the Eastern Conference. I hate calling the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference because it just doesn't fit the IFL. It, it's, so, it's just so stupid how things have changed. You know, it's not even the right type of change either. It's the it's the most dumb changes. But whatever, I rest my case on trying to figure out what in the world kind of plans the IFL has. But in any case, you got teams like Vegas, San Diego, you know, Bismarck, Green Bay. Uh, well, actually, really, it should be San Diego and Bay Area in their own tier bad. And then you got teams like a cluster of Vegas. Bismarck, Green Bay, Sioux Falls, Iowa. Uh, you know, those teams are in a cluster of their own where they're kind of middling. You know, Tucson, too. Naz is kind of benefiting from things right now. I, they're benefiting from the weak division. You know, the Western Conference, they're, weak, they're benefiting. And then you got teams like Massachusetts who are also kind of benefiting from a middling, not not bad, not out, down, downright bad like the Western Conference. I'm talking about, you know, the Eastern Conference is a more of a dogfight. And then you got Arizona and Frisco at the top, you know, of things. You know, I think I named everybody. Also, Duke City's kind of in that weird lower cluster, too. At the, yeah, I think I named everybody now. Um, but the NAL, really, right now, you know, the only thing that's left is seeing when San Antonio will get a win because everybody else has a win now. Congrats, Jacksonville. You got a win last night against Columbus. Again, Danny Southwick coming back. That's crazy, isn't it? So, Carolina's still the class of the league right now. Albany's, you know, still in a good position as well. Columbus, Jacksonville, and Orlando, you know, kind of fighting it out. You know, kind of, you know, before the season, I said Columbus, but I think things might be changing from my end real quick, you know, to that, that sneaky, sneaky good Carolina Copers team. And we'll see how, you know, the next week, next weekend works out, because I believe it's only going to be Friday and Saturday that really has, you know, anything worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, just Friday and Saturday um, next week. So we'll be back, you know, late Saturday. Saturday yeah yeah we'll be back late Saturday night around like 11 p.m. or whatever 1130 to discuss what happened this week and you know after that you know I'll come back to you all on Memorial Day 
to talk, you know, this week in indoor football. So, I'll see you on May 21st, which is, you know, a Saturday this week in indoor football. And come back Friday, you know, won't be uploading most of this week. Um, most of this week, I have to go back to work. I, 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 I have to go back to work. I gotta pay bills. Um, but I'll see you all Friday night. I believe my Friday night is looking kind of nice. Yeah, it's looking kind of nice. So I'll be seeing you all late Friday night to talk USFL week number six. So week six, late Friday night of the USFL. This week in indoor football, late Saturday night. Until then, I'll see you all soon, and I hope you all have a great week. Let's get this money, let's get this bread, and let's make some good memories out of it. Peace.